r slash ask reddit by planet reddit mental hospital workers of reddit what's the craziest thing you've ever seen on the job i did my internship at a state mental hospital about 11 years ago there was a guy there who spoke mostly spanish and was known for exposing himself to various women throughout the campus he wasn't on my caseload but he came to plenty of my groups and was polite to me and well behaved my last day at the hospital he walks up to me and hands me a crumbled brown paper bag and says he got something for me in his broken English. I was terrified to look inside. Knowing his reputation and his violent history. But I peeked in and was shocked to see a small pink teddy bear. I still have it. He shoved the bear down his pants before giving it to you. I guarantee it. Yeah that thing needs to be washed bad. I didn't technically work there. It was a clinical rotation for school. But I have a couple stories. So this paranoid patient, who was relatively pleasant, told us that there was a bat in her room. This was an inpatient facility. Patients don't typically go outside. And windows don't open easily. She was brushed off. One day during rounds, she repeats that things are going well. But there's a bat in her room. She caught it. Everyone was doubtful. But sure enough. She pulls down her bed sheets and there's a goddamn bat trapped underneath that flies out. Felt real bad that people wrote her off for that. So now I'm very careful with people who claim to have seen or felt things that seem unlikely. I've encountered, and had to help catch, a bat that somehow appeared in an apartment that had been locked up for months. I feel for this woman. Bats are sneaky as duck. I was working at a campground one day when I found a bat drowning in the toilet. I scooped him out. Took him into the laundry room and let him warm up. I thought he was dead for sure until he started flying around. Twas a beach trying to get it out of the laundry room but I'm still pretty proud of saving it. Before I started one patient ate a whole clock that was in his room. I bet that was pretty time consuming. He asked for seconds. But they didn't have a minute to spare. My wife works in a psych ward and she had a lady recently give birth to tea bags after claiming to be pregnant during her stay. She shoved them up there and acted out her whole birth and everything. When that was all said and done, she spent a few days screaming at the nurses and texts to give her the baby back. She went to a long term treatment center after that. When her water broke was it boiling? No. Her vagina whistle. I wish I couldn't read this. My thoughts exactly. My brain was screaming no 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 but I just kept reading. Ugh. While I was doing clinicals nothing terribly exciting happened. Because we were kept in the safest unit. But one of the longer term staff there told us about a girl who was in her room and rubbed holes into both forearms to commit suicide. He had even taken pictures. Which were super raunchy though badly lit. But this girl had rubbed the skin and veins in her arm down to the bone. Obviously she died. Bro. That's horrific. That's so sad. How did she do it? I was a rec therapist at a state hospital after college. I worked in what was the aggressive male unit. We had all the murders. Child molesters. And aggressive males. On the unit there was a wing that was locked at all times for the patients that needed extra supervision. One guy was actually caught committed to this wing. He would take advantage of the week so he was on a Q15. Which was a visual check every 15 minutes. Once they found him in the bathroom during a check buying pee from another patient for $2. He told the staff that he wanted to gain the power and strength of the other patient. Another guy didn't have an axis eye diagnosis. Only mild mental retardation. But was aggressive at times and really big so the state sent him to the hospital because there was nowhere else for him. He would love cookies and snacks. But did not have money. He figured out that if he went to the actual hospital they would bring him cookies, snacks, and Shasta ginger ale. So he began to swallow things to go to the hospital. If not watched closely, he would pull the clock off the wall and swallow the batteries just to get snacks. After I left the hospital, I read a story in the paper about a patient drinking bleach and dying. So I called an old co-worker and they confirmed that the patient swallowed bleach after a janitor left the utility closet door unlocked. I have so many stories about that place. I miss working there. It was hands down the most fun I ever had at a job. 
All the patients loved me because I was the guy that would hang out with them and take them out of the hospital on field trips. We have a girl that comes in all the time who does the same thing. She's too high functioning for her group home but low functioning enough the state has custody and won't can't relocate her. Her care plan is absurd may only go to certain hospital, is to be in a room not socializing in hallway, no ginger ale. Water only with no ice it sounds mean but she's also a top ranked abuser of health system in the state. And yeah. It would just be cheaper for the DPH to relocate her. I'm glad you had fun working there. After reading the first two sentences I was expecting the opposite. Are you willing to share more stories? My friend told me this one. She works at a mental hospital in my country that gets the most challenging teenage patients. They got this 12 year old girl who broke her own thigh bone in her room during the third night. Imagine the willpower with that one. Obviously it became a huge deal because that shouldn't have been able to happen. Duck me. Just how? I don't know the details. Because my friend was so shocked about this. She was just out of school when this happened. I felt like she wasn't exactly ready for her work yet. But she wouldn't really talk about it, not that she's allowed to anyway. But what I gathered once when she was really drunk was that the girl just dropped something really heavy repeatedly on the thigh when the thigh was above the air and the rest of the leg was on something solid like a table. I don't know if this is the case 100% and what are the details. But that's the imagine I got. She won't talk about it. So that's all I know. But wouldn't the leg just move or snap from the knee? I really don't know. But it was a thigh bone that she broke. Her dad had broken her leg and arm before. Burned her to the stove and done all kinds of absolutely terrible stuff. Maybe she was used to the pain by then. I don't even want to tell about the absolutely shitty stuff her dad did. I really don't know how a person can do that to themselves. But maybe her childhood explains it, and I know I shouldn't know about this. Because my friend is a nurse. But she really needed a person who would listen about all that terrible stuff she saw. I once pulled a toothbrush out of a man's ass as he yelled duck my kitten. At the top of his lungs. Yes. But enough about your hobbies. What about while you were on the job? They have now been married for 8 years. My grandfather worked at a mental hospital. His favorite story that he used to tell me went something like this. One day I was watching the wards when all of a sudden a huge fellow came running at me. Well I was scared out of my pants since there was no way I could possibly fight this guy off. Just as he came close and I thought it was the end for me. He kept running right past to the bathroom that was behind me. He always got a good laugh out of that one. People being psychotic and even the violent are things you get used to. The extreme incompetence of a large portion of the staff members. And the awesome job the administration did of ignoring it was absolutely shocking. For the most part it was a mess leading to misdiagnosis. Understaffing and mistreatment of patients. But some of them seemed outright malicious. One beach of a nurse would constantly escalate situations to the point of restraints and drugs being used in order to get back at patients who insulted her. I feel I should note that there are several who were absolute pros. Whose skills I truly admired. But they could only pick up so much slack. How the heck do those people, the escalators, work at these places? Why are they there if they don't particularly like that environment and have a knack for dealing with people in those situations? I mean. That's the opposite of how you're meant to act around people with psych disorders. Damn. That's pretty shitty. I had to stay at a mental health ward for just under a week nearly two years ago. The nurses were excellent. You could tell they really cared about the patients and didn't judge us. I had actually gone to college with one of the nurses and she chatted with me like nothing was different since the last time we had seen each other. The psychiatrists were the ones that seemed to have a stick up their ass but we only had to deal with them for a brief meeting every other day. Also. The other patients were some of the best people I've ever met. Most of them were always in a positive mood. Laughing and joking. If you ever want to see people have a random dance party. Just put a radio in the middle of a behavioral health unit. Of course there were some bad outbursts but nothing super shocking. It kind of felt like one super dysfunctional family leaning on one another to get through whatever we were dealing with that time. I actually left with a few new friends that I still keep in touch with today. My grandma worked at a mental hospital and said she watched a man rip out another man's eyeball. 
guess somebody should have been keeping an eye on M. Had a patient who often claimed someone stole his amp. Guitars and money from his room. He never had any of the sort. He'd single someone out. Often another patient or sometimes us nurses and often start trying to throw punches. He once chased a friend of mine around the nurse's station. We caught one patient smothering another with a pillow. You can just be like oh yeah BT dubs dude almost died in a horrific way after a funny story about crazy guitar guy. I worked in a locked unit for a few months. I've been bitten. Scratched. Punched. Spit on. Had my glasses punched off my face and vaginal fluids and vomit thrown on me. The list goes on. But my worst memories are a toss up between a guy staring me dead in the eye and slit his wrist with a big plastic pen. Or seeing a girl swallow a rubber glove. Ice pack. Rocks. Used tampon. Fesses. And an mp3 player. Were all of the items on that list swallowed consecutively or on different occasions? Are you done? During my several sojourns into inpatient care when I was in my teens and early 20s. There was one male psych nurse assigned to a ward full of female patients between the ages of 16 and 21. You could remain in the youth or juvenile ward until you were 21 because of reasons I don't remember now. Patient problems ranged from depression and anxiety disorders to violent psychosis. Substance abuse was common. It was well known among the patients that you could get cigarettes. Alcohol. A Daryl. And Vicodin from this one nurse in exchange for sexual favors. He was there for years. He was reported on occasion. But those reports never led to any disciplinary action because. Well. Who would you believe? The disturbed young ladies with a history of mental illness. Behavioral problems. And substance abuse. Or the clean cut well loved psychiatric employee with a squeaky clean record. Edit to clarify. Nurse guy was way more subtle about this than I make it sound. He wasn't handing out pills like skittles and getting a dozen blowjobs a day. And he was good at picking victims. And also the facility was understaffed and not well run. That's terrible. Wonder why they don't have cameras or anything in a psych ward all places. Stuff like that could be caught if there was. There usually are cameras everywhere. Of course there are going to be gaps or areas like bathrooms and changing areas where they can't put in surveillance. Workers know all the places the cameras do and don't cover so they can keep a better eye on the patients. It's not hard for them to find alone time with patients in places with no surveillance. Especially if the kid is on full observations where they can't even take a piss or shower without at least keeping the door cracked with a worker on the outside occasionally looking in to keep an eye on you. Oh shit. A question I actually have answers for. All of these are second hand from when my mom worked the front desk. So take that as you will. One guy got into a straight up screaming match with his girlfriend. The soda machine. Like how dare you do this to me. Don't you know how much I've done for you and this family. The whole shebang. One kid. When she worked admissions. Came into her office and ducking trashed IT. Then broke a red pen. Splashed it on himself and on the wall. Can confirm the wall splash. Saw it firsthand. And tried to start screaming that she was attacking him. My mom is like the sweetest woman you will ever meet. So the techs were having none of this kid's shit. One time. Some guy walked in from the street carrying a frozen turkey. Mom saw him sit down in the lobby. He sat there for a solid hour and a half. Then got up and left. No clue what was up there. The last one is the only time my mom has ever been creeped out. One evening the cops brought in this teenager. Maybe 15 or so. She had ankle cuffs. Wrist cuffs. And this weird belt that both sets of cuffs were attached to. They brought her in. And basically stood her in the center of the waiting room. While the cops got her paperwork sorted out. This chick just bored holes into my mom's head with her eyes. Freaked mom out enough to the point that she requested to be let off early to get away from this kid. I'm sure if I asked her. I could get some more if anyone is interested. He was trying to go cold turkey. Probably too late but I had a patient who cut off his penis scrotum and ate them. Former mental patient here. There was an older lady who was so constipated. She was laid on her back in her bed with her feet in the air screaming about birthing babies while they pulled it out of her. Then she'd go about the hall talking about her new baby boy. 
I can only imagine what would happen if she had diarrhea or something. Poor lady. She was such a sweet lady. Very loud and so not there all the way. She was so serious about having just given birth. My dad worked as an orderly nurse at a VA hospital. He said there was a guy who would sit in a chair right outside of his room in the hallway and laugh periodically. One day my dad asks what he's laughing at and the man looked at him and said. God is telling me jokes. I wonder if God is actually funny or if he's just laughing so God doesn't get pissed off. Are you kidding me? God is hysterical. Look at this. I'm a nursing student who had my psychiatric mental health clinical in a mental health crisis center. In all reality it's not really that crazy. It's mostly Baker acts for people who are severely depressed. Or people who are neglecting themselves due to their mental illness. Mental health units have a lot of negative stigma associated with them being for crazies and whatnot but really they are just sick people trying to get better. Just like any other hospital. Even the patients with schizophrenia or psychosis are usually there because their meds got out of whack and they are being rebalanced. That being said. The most crazy and heartbreaking case I dealt with was an 8 year old child who grew up watching his stepdad abuse his mom. But could not do anything about it so he would internalize his emotions leading to self harm and suicidal ideation that culminated in him stabbing himself through the arm with scissors at school when he was being bullied. Hearing about how he wished he could just end his life at such a young age was absolutely heartbreaking and really put into perspective minimal my problems were compared to this kid who had gone through more in 8 years emotionally than I have in 20. My first inpatient was in 5th grade. My brother molested me for a year when I was 8 years old. I ended up self harming myself and it wasn't until a teacher found a suicide note I had given to a girl I liked that anyone took me seriously. Just a simple paper cut off that said kill me. I was impatient for only 2 weeks. I'm 20 now. I hallucinate. Hear muffled voices. And have a bad paranoia. Sometimes to the point I thought that my team led's retirement ceremony was actually a suicide cult and I thought they were going to make me drink poison. I went inpatient recently. They gave me medication without any paperwork. Totaled my car a few days later. I was diagnosed with schizophrenia. Now I'm losing my job. I think I'm losing the feeling of love and have considered getting a divorce cause of it. I don't like mental facilities. Or medication. The worst thing I've seen in a facility was probably the loss of time and space. I've done it and seen others do it too. Constantly ask for the time cause there aren't any clocks. Or the date. Sorry if that was anticlimactic. Edit. Spelled paranoia wrong. Sorry you had to go through that abuse. Especially at such a young age. My sister, 13, is in inpatient care right now, she's actually coming home tomorrow. Would you care to describe how the experience was for you? One morning. A new admission needed to give a urine sample. During her assessment she seemed relatively aware of things so nobody thought she'd have difficulty with it. So. I gave her the cup and explained I needed a urine sample. She stared at me blankly. I repeated myself. And when I got no response. I explained I needed to stay in the bathroom to make sure it was a genuine sample, the urine was her own. I turned to give her privacy. The next thing I know. I heard the sink running. She was trying to fill the cup with water. I re-explained exactly what I needed from her. She stared blankly. Mind you. I'm trying to put it as simply as possible at this point. I turned back around to give her privacy. Next thing I know. She's naked and in the shower. I re-explain what I need. And after 15 minutes of this. She complied. I left her in the bathroom and delivered the urine sample to the RN. I was then on assignment of watching a male patient. Whose room was next to that particular bathroom. I hear the bathroom door open but I don't think anything of it. I start to feel uncomfortable but I can't place why exactly. I happen to turn around to find the female patient from before standing directly behind me. Completely naked. Staring me down. I avert my eyes and explain she needs to return to the bathroom and put on her clothes. She stares silently. Makes an almost unbreakable eye contact with me. And starts rubbing lotion on her breasts. I explain to her again I need her in her bedroom or the bathroom and call for the nurse. The patient goes in her room as the nurse comes over. When the nurse knocks on her door, 
The patient comes out fully clothed and stated she had no idea what anybody was talking about. Psychotic patients sure are fun. Also. Another story I wanted to add would be the time a 12 year old smuggled in her iPhone 7 plus by shoving it up her vagina. She was only caught with it because she got her period while storing it. Not an employee but someone who had to be placed into a unit for about 3 months as a teenager. We had some free time scheduled in for a few hours every day. Most of us were just depressed. Suicidal or had eating disorders. There was one girl who had been abused as a child and she had been there for a couple years. She was ducking odd. One day there was a lot of screaming from the common room and a bunch of orderlies had to pin her down on the floor. She had bitten off her ducking finger and then went all Mike Tyson and bit a chunk off one of the orderlies ears. I am happy to say that I was moved very shortly after. So I was on surgery when this happened but we had a patient who was known to our hospital for sticking light bulbs up his ass when he got stressed. Lots of psych issues obviously. Any. Go figure. He was back because he'd done it again. So I was familiarizing myself with his case and going through old notes. He's probably had 6 or 7 removals at this point. And every single case report. The surgeon documented the type model of light bulb. I don't know why. But that just amused me beyond belief. Two people tasting each other's poop and pretending they are on a reality TV show like Master Chef and one of them is judge who is tasting and the other is participating. Hum this fesses is good but could be enhanced by eating more sodium. The presentation could have been better. Maybe if you had swirled the poop. It would be more eye appealing. A few years back. I was misdiagnosed with bipolar disorder and when I went to the ER because the meds were making me have suicidal ideation. I was baker acted. It was the worst 5 days of my life. It was scary and upsetting and the staff were either really nice or rude. Impatient and inattentive. My roommate would masturbate nightly. Other patients would share really disturbing things with me. It smelled awful. The food was awful. My bed was uncomfortable and I had trouble sleeping. A patient choked herself out with a bedsheet. Another patient stabbed herself with a pen so they took our pens away and I couldn't draw or write. A staff member had her face bashed pretty hard by a tall, large patient and there was a lot of blood. I woke up every morning to screams and it was surreal to realize as I woke you that no. It's not a dream. You're really here. This is really happening to you. In the long run. The most frustrating thing was the cost and the level of care we got. I have really good insurance from work so it was pretty much covered. But many patients in there had little to no means and were signing forms accepting the charge for care which was like $1500 a day. And some seemed to have no idea what they were signing. The care involved basic group therapy and meds. I feel the other patients deserve better. It was an eye opening and heart breaking experience. Mental health deserves more attention. Better quality and easier more affordable access thanks for watching subscribe for 3 videos a day